This is Kobo's second Ellipsa, and actually the third e-ink note-taking device, or e-note, in their lineup after the first gen and the Sage. So it is safe to say that Kobo is indeed investing in e-notes, more than any other of the big three, including Amazon and Barnes & Noble. This is the Kobo Ellipsa 2E. This unit boasts a faster processor and a more refined experience than the first gen. But more importantly, above all else, it is made out of recycled plastic. Over 85% recycled plastic, in fact, including 10% ocean-bound plastic. Magnesium alloy on the interior is utilized for the electronic components is also recycled. Not only that, the packaging is completely eco-friendly from top to bottom with no plastics whatsoever, and the case is fully recycled as well. That's important. Rushing to the production lines with a fresh spool of black number no. 5 plastic on your e-reader's backing shouldn't be the priority. Thinking about what is best for the planet and utilizing the plastics we've already made was a better choice in fact. But aside from that, how does this unit actually perform in the real world? Well, we're going to check it out right now, starting with the UI. We have Home, My Books, Notebooks, Discover, and more down below. And we don't have a top bar. Top bar is isolated to individual sections. Brightness, which we'll show you a little bit later on. Wi-Fi, battery, sync and search. That is your top bar effectively. This is the first gen pen. It ran off of a quadruple A battery located in the back right there. The beauty of this is that when you ran out of power, you just chucked in a new battery and you write forever. There's an added cost of being responsible for the power source and the tips separately. So they got rid of that pen. You can still find it if you can still find it. And it does work. And they've moved over to this pen, taking a page out of the book of Sony. They have a charger, this time in the form of a USB-C charging port. You have an eraser at the back and only one button on the side. The tips also have been moved over from the standard Wacom-esque tips. It's not using Wacom. And they've moved over to something that looks more resembling of a Apple Pencil or even a Huawei M Pen. So that's the pen situation at hand. If you go over to library, these are where all your books are going to be. You can do various things like tap the little dots next to things, choose cover view, manage books, download all, etc. You have different ways to sort. You have by recent, date added, title, author, etc. And you can filter things out by either here or the top bars going to authors, series, or collections. Going to the more section or settings is where you're going to find more settings. It's as easy as that. You have Dropbox, My Articles, which is from Pocket. You have Activity, which kind of follows along everything you're reading, gives you some stats, gives you some kind of data points. Now, we must say this isn't a fast unit. It's faster than the Gen 1, but it's not fast. It's not like what we've been seeing with Google Play integrated e-ink tablets. That's not what's happening here. It is very slow and more like an e-reader than an Android tablet. If you go to beta features, you have web browser, large print mode, my words, Sudoku, unblock, at solitaire and word scramble these are very simple games very simple things that don't require any kind of a2 mode or any sort of an intensity to play so if you press it a couple times the hitboxes are a little bit kind of hard to find but once you get it you get it and this will just be very simple kind of quiz games where you can kind of move everything around and get out and that's basically it just to kind of break up the reading if you want to take a break from things that's really what it's there for on the home screen you have my books side loaded things and the things you're currently reading. It's very nice how Kobo gives you the majority of the screen for you, whereas Amazon dedicates only a small amount of area for you and then everything on either side of it is either ads or additional features they're throwing at you. So it's nice to see Kobo doing that. Let's go into an ebook and see what it's all like. Yes, you can take notes on here. This is amazing because the scribe doesn't even let you do that. So for example, how about lunch? Well, I can circle that and I can underline that and be like make sure you remember this i mean that's just crazy i'm writing on an epub and this is one i downloaded you can sideload in your own epubs and write on them it's crazy you can change the entire watch this i've just changed the entire meaning of that of what's on the screen here that's amazing and you can press the side button and do a highlight so much like the sony where you can press that button and it actually dedicates a highlight 
that's what you can do on this unit and you have the eraser at the back so you don't have to use sticky notes or anything like that if you explore the fonts we can lower the font we can up the line spacing change the margins change the justifications or go to advanced which really only Kobo seems to have you can choose a before and after look at what exactly you want it to be and what it was and you can change it accordingly we're just going to revert for now but that's cool that's going above and beyond and adding features that you genuinely would want tapping the middle once again you have a few more things you have rotate you have a glow light and you have those analytics again but in this state it will give you just a little bit of a drop down of it if you go to the reading settings here you'll have header you'll have the ways you can change it the reading orientation the page turn information the dark mode you can swap the entire thing over to a a black and white inversion mode that's the one thing that i've had trouble with the kobo devices is the touch box it's very hard to actually isolate and pinpoint where to touch the screen at times you have to be quite patient so dark mode is a very nice feature as well it's good to kind of have everything inverted so it affects your eyes less if that's a problem when you have things like an Amazon device or a Kobo, they have a copious amount of content. And what's within that content other than books? Manga and graphic novels. This is really nice, guys. This is much larger than a typical manga in Japan, but it's still nice all the same. Now, unfortunately, you do have some way to kind of zoom in and move it around, but you don't have a panel view. There's, you don't have a hand-holding guided view that goes from panel to panel like you do on an Amazon. And this is also suffering from a little bit of a PPI disparity between this Kindle Scribe for example this is not 300 ppi like a lot of the later units of devices in the industry this is 227 so you're going to see a little bit less pixel density which means things are just a little bit more spread out is it going to be noticeable with the naked eye not if you just have this but if you get these under a, a macro lens and you put them next to something with higher pixel density yeah you'll start to see it either way this is a great experience i would have liked to see a little bit of a controllable a2 mode but overall it's pretty quick to get around once you let go it renders within a second and a half and there's really no major issues with it the note taking section is crazy and only Kobo does this, not one other manufacturer does what Kobo does. Let's take a look. We're going to start with the basic notepad. You have ballpoint pen, fountain pen, calligraphy, brush, and highlighter. You also have multiple colors, five in fact, and you have different brush sizes, and you can change the size based on the pressure. Now the downside about all this is that it doesn't feel that great. It just kind of feels like you're writing on a piece of plastic with a hard other piece of plastic there's not really a whole lot of feel to it and in fact they took a step back with these really hard conical nibs because it doesn't have any flex whereas the previous gen did the tips kind of flexed back and forth giving you a little bit of a sense of realism this one's just kind of hard and clunky and clicky it's very kind of disengaging when it comes to the note-taking feel not the functions let's move into it again here I'm gonna draw a little box I can have a freeform tool and grab that and move it around and that's really cool I also have an eraser I can choose the way I want to erase or just swipe with the back of the pen I like the pen having an extra button here then I don't have to actually break immersion and flip the pen over but that's a personal opinion you have back forward and you have a bar here that drops down and you have templates you even have export right here you can export this page or the full notebook and it gives you some options to the computer or to Dropbox which is really cool now you might be asking well where is all the rest of the features I don't see shapes I don't see text conversion where is it it's actually located and again this is the only company that does this it's located in a completely separate notebook advanced advanced is crazy you might be wondering okay well this is advanced let's get into it I'm gonna draw something on oh make your writing smaller okay so I'll make my writing smaller then I'll say ha huh, Peter is here like that and then it's like okay well that's still make my writing small what am I doing wrong so what you must do are follow these to a T if I write hey there okay now it did it so you're like okay well that now it's in there w what can I do from here you can actually double tap that and it immediately changes it and you're like wow that's that's amazing can I continue yeah there's a bunch of things you can do for example let's get a thinner size just to have a little bit more accuracy there's a huge learning curve with this if you circle a word it's going to highlight it 
If you underline a word, it's going to embolden it. If you double tap, you can start to blow it up and edit it. That's insane, and it works with lines and lines of text. It just goes all day. Now you might be saying, well, okay, I don't see anything else on the top. It's all buried here. You have drawing, diagram, freeform section, math equation. This is some good stuff. Freeform section is going to isolate to a box. It's going to have some lines on it to help you guide you along. Same with drawing. Drawing isolates you to a little box because again, you can't draw like that wherever you want on the screen. If you go over here to diagram, diagram is really interesting and it actually works much like an eye reader in that you can make all all these shapes and stuff write something do whatever you want double tap and it changed the entire thing smoothed everything over made a star put an M it, it utilizes text now grays out everything that you wanted to see this is really cool and again not a lot of manufacturers employ this so once you have all these things it's all in line and you're free to put whatever you want wherever you want for example I can say Okay, that's going to be a header and I'll double tap that and now that's header. Now I'll move down and I'm, I know that that's for my reference that it's going to be there. This is the coolest thing right here, math equation. This is taking it to a next level that I wouldn't even be able to type this in my calculator as fast as I'm able to do it here. I can write anything. you put an equal sign at the end of basically any well-written equation, it's going to do it. I don't even know if that's right, equals or approximate to 10.276. I don't even know how to put that in my calculator, but I can do that on here. If your equation is past the point of you being able to actually put it in your calculator, because maybe you don't know how to break down the fractions or a square root, you can put it in here. It does parentheses, it does the correct order, it does sine, cosine, tan, it's quite exemplary how it does that. And another thing about this canvas is that it's elongated up and down so it just keeps going and going. And if you don't want a subsection, you just long press it, much like any command on an Android device, and it just, it's gone. And that's the beauty of this advanced notebook is that Kobo takes it to a place no other manufacturer has ever been, ever. No one will do the note-taking experience like this. Is it hard to learn? Absolutely. This is a strong learning curve. Is it convoluted? Yes, it is. There's many different things you must be aware of. You must split your focus between your basic notebook, which does have more features than things like the Amazon and the Fujitsu, but less features than an Onyx. Then you get into an advanced section, and it's just, it's even more features than your average e -note. So there's a strong amount of, it uh, takes a lot of time to get used to it. But once you are used to it, you're glad you have these features. Right behind the Amazon bookstore exists Kobo Rakuten. They're so big, they're on devices that aren't even Kobo devices. For example, Sony reader devices had moved every one of their user base over to the Kobo bookstore. So they're on devices that aren't even their own brand. Quite exemplary, honestly. This is the Kobo ebook store. When you click on discover this, what pops up, it's going to be different based on the region you're in. We conduct our reviews from the Japan office here. Everything's going to be in yen, but it'll be in USD, EU, euros, whatever the case may be. You can click on something like a book here. And when you do, you can buy it. You can add it to your wish list. You have details, synopsis, all that fun stuff. Of course, Japan Japan is huge on manga, so if you go over to a manga, you can do the same thing. You can even do preview now. It loads a preview. It's the same thing as buying or downloading a sample. Once you're in it, you can read a few pages, see if you like it, go to your buying decision, tap the center, you can purchase it, or you can go to the very end, which gives you about seven or eight pages, and then you're all done. You have related, you have reviews, detailed, and so forth. Everything can be purchased pretty much worldwide, but the content is going to be specific to your region. Well, if you can write on ebooks, you bet your chickens you can write on PDFs, which you can. Side loaded PDFs work perfectly fine. They turn pages kind of fast, not that. It's really not that quick of a unit. We've said it a couple times, but it must be mentioned that you can't have instant gratification with this. You see, you just e even as you're swiping pages, there's some delay, and that just is inherently with the problem with e-paper, but it's 2023 now. We've seen e-paper devices like Dasung and Hisense that are super capable. They're capable of playing videos upwards of 20, 23 frames a second, which is just insanity. We would never would have thought that would have happened over the years. 
Either way, Kobo leaves it up to you. You can draw on it. It's all very quick and it still has the same functionality. If you press that secondary button, you get the highlights and all that fun stuff. The eraser works lightning quick. That's all very nice. And it even does a little bit of a courtesy refresh for you right there. You do have pinch and zoom. You do have a mini map and it's not too bad of a movement experience. But again, once you get into that rendering, that's when it takes a hit. It takes a second, finally kind of flashes a few times and you're ready to go. And you have to make sure you're zoomed all the way out or else you can't interact with it anymore. Up top you have move, you have rotate, and you have some PDF settings. PDF settings are going to be the exact same things as the reading settings because that's all it needs to reference. It just needs to know where you're tapping on the screen, how you're interacting with it, and so forth. Outside of that, not too many PDF engine related settings but it's enough to get you by. The glow light is what they're pushing as well because they said that it has the comfort light. Let's look at the white first or the blue light. That's really nice. I must say, it is intense. It It's kind of lighting up the room, no no joke. It's, it's quite strong, but it's clean. It's a very clean glow light. I don't see any spillage. Sometimes you get that misaligned line where the EPD, the electronic paper display, is slightly off kilter from the actual housing. You don't see any of that here. Now let's look at the natural light full blast before we blend it. Yeah, it's quite orange. This is this is like Florida sunset. I don't even know if that's accurate, but it is quite orange. I wouldn't necessarily say it's any better on the eyes because it's still intense. You have to lower that intensity. It's quite bright. That's nicer. You're getting kind of this desert clay kind of feel to it and then you go over here and you're like okay that's more of a that's more of a balanced middle ground and you've blended the comfort light with the cool light and now it's just that's a perfect balance that's nice and white not too overexposed not gonna damage the retinas of your partner laying next to you as you're trying to read your books good balance and they do give you that option of these two slider bars you also have a bedtime right here again there's those hit boxes you really just gotta gotta hit and point on and you have learn more which is just some additional information about blue light about auto switch all that now unfortunately it does not have a light sensor in the hardware so it's not going to switch automatically for you based on the light it's going to switch automatically for you based on the time of day that your device is set to Wrapping it all up, did we really need another Kobo Ellipsa? Yeah, absolutely, that's the answer to that question. The first Ellipsa came out two years ago in 2021, and since then only one other E-Note came out from the Big Three, the Scribe, which was a good device in and of itself, but lacked overall functionality. Kobo went the opposite direction, not just with the stylus, but with the functionality. In fact, they gave you so much functionality that they had to split it into two separate programs, basic and advanced. Kobo is doing exactly what they should be doing right now, expanding their lineup, trying new things, and stress testing the industry to see how much we can all handle. If you want to grab one of these, details down below. Thanks for watching.